Americans are not going to come and fight our war. We'll have to fight our war. Americans did not go to put boot on the ground in Ukraine. Neither they are going to come here. If we have to really understand China, we have to also understand how it views the power dynamic. China is concerned, you're absolutely right, that intelligence operations are a fundamental source of power and influence for the party. But the underlying message was all that was one, that we will outcompete the Americans. And they did it over 100 years. Now, so, this is the point. Either you have a written strategy or you have a 100-year marathon. I'm told in 1997, they spent 2.5% of their GDP on defense. In 2021, given all the transformation that has occurred in the PLA, some say it's the most massive in the history of mankind, we would think that their GDP would have zoomed up on defense. You'll be surprised it has lowered. See, there was a time when the PLA didn't have a plane which could fly across the Taiwan Strait. From there today, they have a, the most sophisticated, and this is Americans acknowledging it, most sophisticated system of ballistic cruise and hypersonic missiles in the world. They take that idea and scale it up into eight domains. Land, air, sea, subsea, seabed, space, cyber, EW. I think it was the IPACOM commander in a confidential briefing who said that if the rocket force opens up, 90% of American allied aircraft will be wiped out on the ground. These are the invincible Americans. It is linked to Z's political statements when he says, you know, prepare not only for the high winds, but also for the dangerous storms, which is Taiwan. They have got a college of information engineering, college of aerospace engineering, 90 research laboratories, five other colleges which look at the geopolitics of space, the geopolitics of AI. So it is a colossal effort. Now, anybody who says, where are we? You just put yourself against these facts and you will know where you are. But their strategy keeps changing. Just find out which is the sector, which is the industry, who are the individuals people hold as icons. Let's compromise them first. Let's corrupt them first. Jain Dosto, you're watching Defensive Offense English. And as promised, we are back with another episode uh, where we are going to discuss China with Lieutenant General Raj Shukla. And he has also lived up to his promise of coming back. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you, whoever. I really started enjoying these episodes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, sir, um, let's start today. So, uh, I wanted to discuss um, the Chinese love for espionage and spycraft. And, you know, I have seen that uh, if, you, if you go back in the history, uh, we have seen that uh, the people who have taken over power in China, people who have been running China, have been people who have been involved in statecraft, spycraft, and all these arts. So let's, for example, if we see that uh, Zhao Enlai, uh, he formed uh, Zongyang Teke in 1927, which was the first intelligence, so-called intelligence agency, if you, if you can call it, uh, for People's Liberation Army. And, uh, and at that, that time, there was a, uh, this uh, Chinese Communist Party. And he later on went on to become uh, the premier of China. So we see similar, so many examples that such people got to become presidents and premiers. Whereas on the Indian side, we see that every prime minister, every new prime minister has a new strategy to deal with China if they have any. Because in past, we have also seen prime ministers who had no strategy at all. How to deal with China? How what what are India's national? What should be India's national security policy? Do we have a national security policy today? Because I don't see a policy document that is there on which all political parties agree that okay, so this is the India's national security policy, this is India's strategic policy, and this is what we are going to implement in upcoming 40, 50 years. So that thing we don't see here. So don't you think that political structure that we have? have so many flaws that are kind of advantage for China, apart from the advantage that they already have of having such leaders. Okay, <clears throat> so Weber, before I answer this question, you see, I wanted to 
you know what in this episode i wanted to focus on is uh, on the fact as to if we have to really understand china we have to also understand how it views the power dynamic so for example there are two ways simply of looking at the world one is uh, one earth one family vasudev kutumb yeah, so that's also a very noble concept in its own way but swami vivekanand the realist in him said that the world is a great gymnasium where we all come to make ourselves strong so that is another world view that ultimately uh, international affairs the international system is a contest for power and it is a brutal contest for power in which everything is kosher so you know say for the west we are all those who especially the indian army which has been schooled in the western strategic thought we all quote clausewitz so clausewitz says that you know trickery deception these are weapons of the weak buzdil karte hain ye sab sun sun says they are weapons of choice our own chanakya or at least our ancient state craft talks of sam dam dand bhed sir sorry to interrupt you sir even the rigveda yes it's all about it in yes. rigveda it's all about and it in rigveda there are hymns where it is said that if you have to give poison to your enemy or the king of your enemy state give it espionage and spy craft is an integral part of your setup and somebody who doesn't understand or doesn't practice it does not deserve to be king absolutely so similarly like sam dam dand bhed in the foreign policy sense is national interest by means fair or foul yes so even foul is kosher so that is the way the international system is structured in so far as uh, you know china is concerned you are absolutely right that intelligence operations are a fundamental source of power and influence for the party so if you have to understand the chinese communist party china past present and future you have to understand not only the way it conducts intelligence covert operations but how its state its state craft is modeled on deception which they do not think is wrong they think it is fundamental to good foreign policy now see that is the whole uh, uh, issue when it comes to china for example if you talk of their intelligence agencies uh, they have the mss ministry of national security which is their premier national intelligence, uh, intelligence agency they have the uh, united uh, front works department upwd which is actually a party agency the pla has you know in a department for eavesdropping and hacking political warfare int analysis all that is there but see how deception is structured into their state craft we will come to this later for example when china was wondering as to how it should recover or rebuild its image in the post tiananmen phase they launched an entire influence operations to correct this image and whom did they target people like bob hawk the australian foreign minister george bush in retirement alexander haig john norton chairman brookings the atlantic council rand corporation and this whole business of resurrecting this image was very carefully crafted which you know people now call influence operations elite capture and then they said one more thing they structured this whole thing about a peaceful rise which was whose primary purpose was to deceive so the peaceful rise the same think tanks uh platforms like the bao forum or the bao forum i don't know how it's pronounced it's held annually in hainan where ev- all these people gathered and see how brilliantly they crafted it what were they doing they were saying that bob hawk a former f- prime minister must lend his reputation to this vehicle of influence operations so just his reputation and there through very respected chinese academics former editors of the people's daily 
the president of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, they crafted this whole thing that you see, उससे पहले नेरेटिव क्या था चाइना इज अ थ्रेट चाइना इज कोलेप्सिंग नो चाइना इज राइजिंग पीसफुली इट हैज नो इंटेंशन ऑफ एवर कमिंग इन टू कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद यू जस्ट हेल्प अस लिटल एंड हाउ डिड दे डू इट दे हैड टू ट्रम कार्ड्स एक्सेस टू दे टॉप पॉल पार्टी लीडर्स एंड टू वट शेल आई से टू लेट दैम इन टू दिस होल मिस्ट्री दैट वॉज चाइना बिकॉज इज एमर्जिंग चाइना वॉज अ मिस्ट्री so everybody was keen to get to china so they would you know shall i say pull apart the curtains of that ministry and so you came to the bao forum you were given an audience with the prime minister of the day or the they used this to garner influence but they didn't stop at that for example we say bollywood soft power but we leave it at that so we take pride in the fact that dangal ran in beijing they don't stop at that they use this influence now to get to trade secrets proprietary research weapons technology so that influence operations has a definite purpose so that is why chinese intelligence operations the whole thing of why do they call it why do they say that these were the smartest influence operations ever conducted now there must be maybe an element of hyperbole but it was very sophisticated very subtle even bob hawk wouldn't know and he really did know um, uh, You see the old Chinese tactic of spies, uh, honey. Just one minute, honey potting. वो सब नहीं किया. Very subtle influence of. This is one point I want to make to you about the strategy business. See, if we have a strategy, very good. The Americans have a very good strategy, defense strategy, national security, AI strategy. But look at their implementation. What do the Chinese have is even more worrying. When they speak of a hundred-year marathon. it is actually a strategy made in 1949 immediately after that chow and lai and mao they are in conversation with president the president of the day with george marshall and they are telling them that see please help us give us money give us technology give us weapons we one day want to become like you we will become a democracy like you just give us this let us come out of our poverty now they don't have a written strategy but the 100 year marathon that we will come to this in 100 years it will take that much time is drilled into every bureaucrat every pla officer every party official and i am told that you know in their supreme party think tanks in these um, their best universities these are actually taught to the elites so without a written strategy the 100 year marathon is in your blood and it passes from generation to generation so it passes from mao to deng there is hide and bide and then z makes it loud and proud but the underlying message was all the was one that we will out compete the americans and they did it over 100 years now so, this is the point either you have a written strategy or you have a 100 year marathon but what and you know we'll get to this so what it should tell us is how china looks at power how intense the geostrategic or geopolitical competition is and therefore how serious we should be it is a very grim competition so but uh, you gave the example how zhao and lai and uh, the mao zedong they approached the americans and they you know started talking and they convinced them in reality they they were able to convince a lot of western uh, countries to come and engage with them but sir they when i as i initially i had talked about songyang take uh, zhao and lai started negotiating for shanghai and he had been engage uh, uh, you know negotiating on shanghai with the britishers and the french for like 25 odd years before he could join mao mao tse tung and go and uh, start talking uh, to these people so he already knew he had the experience of you know talking to the western powers for about 25 years so he had a backup of he knew the psyche he knew how to deal with these people how can i actually cut a deal he knew what do they want what is what are the things that they are going to be interested in on the other hand when we talk about ourselves so we don't have such people and it's a reality that we have to accept 
and we don't have somebody of with the experience of 25 years who has spent dealing with china just china nothing else and if he is there he might not be in indian foreign service or uh, the national security council so how do you cope up with the, this problem so we do have this problem yes of course we have it and see what we must acknowledge is that chinese intelligence intelligence operations are indeed deft they are sophisticated so our response has to be even more deft and sophisticated and the second thing see i think what is a chinese strength i don't know whether you agree with me look at their view of themselves so when they compare themselves with the americans they say see america has a history of what 150 to 200 years yes we have a history of 6000 years yes. now you may disagree with them you jo middle kingdom ki baat karte hain mm. what is the middle kingdom they say this is the heaven above mm. then there is china the middle kingdom and then they are the lowly tributaries yeah. they argue that from year 1 to 1820 20, we were the foremost economy we were the foremost civilization so the last 120 200 years have been an aberration they will end so this whole civilizational look Uh, right or wrong is what guides their intel but you see today i want to discuss four things mm-hmm. uh, let's call it r s i 2 we must discuss two of these things today the rocket force and the strategic support uh, i was just coming hey, hey, to it i just want to just yeah. of course we'll come to it to tell you that see when they want to transform what do they do and see it is not that there are diff- no difficulties rocket force is going through a lot of difficulties yes but the sheer ambition and the scale is something we must look at third thing is intelligence and the fourth equally important issue is innovation see what is innovation doing i'll give you a piece of t- statistic uh they say that the chinese military they studied the mistakes that the soviet union made so spending too much on military so much on the military that it upset the economy so how they are correcting it I am told in 1997 they spent 2.5 percent of their GDP on defense. In 2021, given all the transformation that has occurred in the PLA, some say it's the most massive in the history of mankind. We would think that their GDP would have zoomed up on defense. You'll be surprised; it is lowered. It is lowered to about 1.8, 1.9 now. Whatever they conceal the budget and all. but the fact remains that they are proving that you can add military muscle without necessarily spiraling costs not increasing increase hoga but not spiraling now this is the whole challenge and how they have done it is through other instruments like innovation civil military fusion new talent pipelines so there is so many things to be studied about the chinese because they are an adversary and we have to see realistically what do we need to do if we are to you know measure up to the china challenge and some of it may be fluff so if it is fluff we must ignore it but dekhna ye hai ye jo teen char metrics hain what is fact what is fluff kya haqeeqat hai aur kya khwab hai so that will give you a good way to to rightfully measure this the size and nature of the, the chinese threat so the, you know these four issues because they constitute this new playbook that is china ye hai kya this new playbook that is china so we could discuss these four four so sir let's uh, start and uh, if we just talk about uh, xi jinping's time hmm. uh, he had made so many reforms uh, like uh, he uh, ended the seven military regions that were there and clubbed them into five theater commands and uh, he uh, refused two strategic armed forces pla rocket force and uh, the strategic support force which includes digital firepower required for the cyber warfare and uh, she could do all this in his own tenure as president whereas we on the other hand first the first part of the question is going to be how important or significant do you think these reforms are and how effective they are going to be and how big of a threat so these are the, uh, the questions that are there and secondly on the other hand if we look at ourselves we are yet to decide whether we need ordinance factory boards or not that's the bottom line of the reforms that we are talking about whether we need ordinance factory boards whether it should be in kolkata or somewhere else 
whether they whether ordinance factory board is a white elephant or we don't need it or we need to change the way it operates or we need to bring in new machineries new new tech to be introduced so um, and as far as cyber warfare in all these fronts that she has worked so heavily on where are we standing so so see uh, first let me just say that the scale of the chinese transformation is mind boggling and why me everybody acknowledges it the americans the whole world acknowledge it is actually mind boggling what it should tell us is that see many of these transformations have also begun in our context but we need to add speed and scale to them and here you see in my view the political initiation of these reforms have been initiated in india it is now the bureaucracies military civil technological administrative they must follow up because if you don't follow up the world is not waiting for you to reform so just say an example look at the chinese they studied all the mistakes that they had made they studied all the good that had happened in the us army and all the mistakes that they had made in 2001 the chairman of ndu national defense university says we are studying every word that andrew marshall has written humility so they studied andrew marshall was you know the strategic advisor to eight american presidents across the aisle having studied them once they made up their minds look at the reforms what you said g realized that the first organization which needs to be um, set right for lack of a better word is the army because the army was all too powerful it was in the static theater commands they had empires of their own possibly things like ordnance factories eo and absolutely disjointed from the challenges of modern combat so, and he realized that what is this one weakness of the pla he said it was corruption so he launched this whole campaign i'm told 86 generals were sacked four leapt to their suicide and all that and once he had weakened them on this corruption issue he unleashed the whole spate of reforms now they were so bold that in one and a half years you not only set up these theater commands in a very powerful army for the first time naval and army air force officers were nominated to the central military commission it was unheard of then gradually you had naval commanders commanding the you know eastern theater command and i think the southern theater command now you have an admiral who has been appointed to the rocket force unheard of see the kind of you know turf battles the pushback and he was in a battle against the princelings the pla was full of princelings you remember his term where he said it is you know the corruption is also the tigers not only the flies yes no this is what he did but with a double purpose he used that to unleash reforms no matter how history judges g in the future he is a great military reformer he hasn't hesitated now let's come to these two issues which we are going to discuss the rocket force and strategic support force because it will give you a strength sense of the ambition and scale of this this reform so you see what is this rocket force and strategic support force they are these two signature projects of the pla that have been fused to create this cross cutting enterprise of long range precision now just mark my words and i'll explain it to you why it is so ambitious cross cutting enterprise of long range precision which the means see there was a time when the pla didn't have a plane which could fly across the taiwan strait from there today they have a the most sophisticated and this is americans acknowledging it most sophisticated system of ballistic cruise and hypersonic missiles in the world from 2021 till today they have tested 135 ballistic missiles of various kinds more than the testing done by the entire world put together the americans acknowledge that their testing laboratories for hypersonics and all that wind tunnels and all are more sophisticated than theirs in hypersonics general milley has said that they are years ahead of us when they did that fractional orbital bombardment system which is actually you take a warhead to the orbit and attack it uh, and it is so designed that it escapes the entire air defense positioning of the americans it's northward looking it can come from any direction so it's a new vector and it has got it is nuclear capable 
they have completely upset the american apple cart totally you know this is the system they have created look at the scale and the ambition so the rocket force is an instrument of global deterrence and just see how carefully they've done it so taiwan all target sets in taiwan first trial and chain jo ye japan philippines wagaira wali line hai wahan pe then guam which is actually a forward command center of the ipcom all the way to continental usa everything is in their reach not only conventional missiles nuclear missiles and the strategic a support force which you mentioned this is a purveyor of exquisite capacities in digital combat now the second one has no parallel in the world even in thought yes so the americans and the british have got space command cyber command but the chinese have been so forward looking so as to fuse these yes. and see how brilliant it is yeah. because see you need space so you need say from space there is a satellite and there is a down linking station mm-hmm. but the data which flows they will take care of it with their cyber capacities the em waves on which the data travels they will destroy it so they are talking of electromagnetic combat look at spectrum warfare there what is spectrum warfare so you have this information they will use algorithms to convert this information into targeting data and the better the algorithms the faster the conversion and now they have using ai for in flight updates when the missile is traveling so look at the precision that's happening now the very ambition all of it may not go right the scale and the ambition is mind boggling whether it actually works or not is a different matter and see how it started is a very good idea they studied gulf war 1 2 where they saw what was happening so the americans for the first time saw these sensors battle networks and precision munition smart munition and not tonnages hmm. number of precise rounds not tonnage they take that idea and scale it up into eight domains land air sea subsea seabed space cyber ew and it's all these domains so for example you have seabed sensors you have what you call leo satellites they have 13000 of course usa is ahead 42000 which musk is launching you have edge computing underwater drones jahan se aapko information milti hai you take it across from these eight domains and you this is combined through all technologies ai all these big data leveraging all that to create combat over match now what is combat over match in the missile area we we'll see baki chhod do look at their ambition now eight domains and you take you leverage these domains so let's say in the area of missiles you have range as i told you from srbm to the df21 to the df26 which is that aircraft carrier all the way to continental united states look at speed now you have ballistic cruise in the hypersonic glide vehicles which they seem to be the in the lead it has maneuverability it has speed which means it can evade any known radar system so today in the taiwan contest uh, context the most i mean the views are that the chinese missiles are such now the americans also have ad system patriot thard and ages and all that but the americans are conceding that this will saturate the ad system so the missiles will get through therefore they are dispersing their b52 bombers from guam to australia all those places the americans being on the back foot you know so range speed and precision precision i have told you it is not just about spraying artillery or spraying and therefore on 31st december when they created this separate service it's like creating a new indian army so they created this rocket force created the strategics as support force as separate services so the world was wondering why now you know why so this is you know there's there there scale and what it will do and this is not just this if it was just a missile force they are integrating all this into their air delivery platform so the j7 j20 h6 h20 strategic stealth bomber which will go beyond guam hawaii and to continental united states y20 refuelers reuter munitions stealth drones 
all this is happening and that is what you know makes it so so leverage those domains and in this speed of missilery and all create these spectacular uh, effects now this is you know what is and what is the larger strategic purpose it neutralizes american force projection first talent chain second talent chain the carrier advantage that the americans had and which they used you know in previous crisis 95 96 Why 91 in 1950? May when Mao thought he will just roll over into Taiwan, Seventh Fleet came. In 58, when he made a second attempt, USA said, "We'll nuke you." See how he's responded. Now there is a nuclear response. There is this DF-26 carrier, and it is it has the potential to disrupt the American so ability to project so power. Just one point, and then I'll finish. and the most important thing prevent usa from meeting its treaty obligations so if if it cannot come to the rescue of japan korea that is the mn end of american power therefore this rocket force and the strategic support force is so important uh, sorry you were saying something sir and we have uh, they have uh, also managed to bully americans in the south china sea they have managed to over overpower their fighter jets they have managed to overpower their ships they have managed to overpower the entire invincibility the idea of invincibility of americans like if they are americans they are invincible they'll go and uh, like uh, the it, it was a kind of uh, you know um, myth that was built up in the minds in the psyche it was engraved in the psyche of entire world that americans are invincible so i mean how great of a feat do you think that this has been i mean very great And see, let you say uh, I, I'll use a, a different word, not as strong. There is great unease in the Indo-Pacific Command, and this most journalists tell you. Most, uh, of course, officially they will not tell you, but there is great unease. But I'll now give you a direct quote. You know, Admiral Samuel Paparo, he is the 64th commander of the U.S. Pacific. Currently, he has been nominated to take over IPCOM, CNC IPCOM. I'm quoting him. He says along its 9000 mile coastline the PLA rocket force which is D DF21 and DF26 bases has redefined the principles of naval warfare redefined the principles of naval warfare i mean just supplementing what you are saying i think it was the IPCOM commander in a confidential briefing who said that if the rocket force opens up 90% of american allied aircraft will be wiped out on the ground these are the invincible americans so the rocket force is uh, and the strategic support force you know i just complete the strategic support of one yeah. minute now look at the strategic support force it is the fusion of information data new technologies from deep sea to outer space they have realized the chinese that data is the new engine of war as is the lesson from ukraine so you have military clouds ai enabled targeting super computing quantum if they achieve a breakthrough quantum will add absolutely new dim- dimension to it it has you know it is headquartered in the haidian district of beijing it orchestrates all the non kinetic effects the rocket force is the kinetic instrument this is non kinetic but even more lethal so the chinese there have increased their orbital presence which means satellites by 379% so you have these you know f- uh, 45 satellites 120 ground stations and all these satellites have this uh, strategic navigation functions to enable missile targeting and you know political warfare so an entirely an informational umbrella a digital framework to make sure the missiles are precise to uh, control the data it is mind bogglingly ambitious so it, the americans in this domain they also have capabilities but they are scattered they didn't have the ambition to say that we will combine all these domains they are now do it doing it by way of reaction so look at these are just two elements of you know the uh, the chinese the rocket force and the strategic support force which have a great potential and it is linked to xi's political statements when he says you know prepare not only for the high winds but also for the dangerous storms which is taiwan he has told them to be 1000% ready he was just there two weeks back in the eastern heater command he reviews their preparedness now there are some difficulties in that we will come to it but 
in so far as the ambition scale fusion of science and technology and look at you what they have set up they have got a college of information engineering college of aerospace engineering 90 research laboratories five other colleges which look at the geopolitics of space the geopolitics of ai so it is a colossal effort now anybody who says where are we you just put yourself against these facts and you will know where you are so we really have to wake up to this reality and do a lot the americans have now woken up to it but they are realizing that it may be late if you see the last aspen forum where the ipacom commander was interviewed every time he says that we need to do much more at a faster speed and in scale he is repeatedly telling saying this so this is and see let there are two questions which we must really answer and that is of deterrence look at ukraine the west may have done a lot nato may have done a lot but they did very little when it was actually required so that deterrence failed if deterrence fails you fail now deterrence must not fail in taiwan's deterrence must not fail along the lac which means we need to do far more than what we are doing that is what you know is uh, the, the i think the conclusion from these first two instruments of the rocket force and strategic sure, i would like to sir just uh, continue this this, uh, this discussion i would like to know um, as you said that uh, if we just go through these facts that you have and i agree with everything that you have said so far because these are the realities these are the facts what uh, ji had done till today and uh, the kind of might that uh, chinese have uh, managed to acquire and uh, what's the problem this we come back to the same question americans are not going to come and fight our war we'll have to fight our war Americans did not go to put boot on the ground in Ukraine. Neither they are going to come here. So, so I have a very simple question: What about uh, if we are faced with the China in a full-fledged war, which possibly might happen? The kind of behavior that China is, or the kind of posture that China is having on the eastern border and our northern border. So. are we prepared first of all and uh, secondly even if the political leadership is agreeing for all these reforms they are not refusing and they are saying okay i'm willing we are willing to do everything and actually the implementation has to be done by the military and civil bureaucracy and if they are not working i mean what's the way forward because we are not seeing the uh, the kind of the volume of reforms that should be done we are happy with our annual exercises we are happy with our uh, sh- military showbiz i call it so we are happy with like a- like aero india they said all all is fine but where are the hardcore reforms i have been listening about reforms of ordinance factory board for past 5 6 years now and nothing has happened so you have been there till last year sir can you tell me what has uh, what reforms have taken place in uh, ordinance factory board No, so the ordnance factory, the whole ordnance factory service is being restructured. It is being made into a corporate entity and all. See, but the point is what? The point is we are doing things. But, but the kind of time that it is yes, going to consume. There, I agree with you. Pace and scale. Now, uska dekho answer kya hai? We have now raising a rocket force. So we are doing it, but the rocket force has to be of this kind, as sophisticated as this. Do we are going to have DF seventeen kind of hypersonic missiles? No? it's going to take time now so the point exactly is this that why are i mean we all have to introspect why are we behind the pace of change for example in gulf war 1 2 when the chinese were watching what was happening in terms of precision munitions sensors and all this is a failing why did we not take note then and do something i mean sir so, so they they saw it like the operation desert storm when it happened yes. the, the iraqis were prepared in a some other way they were like uh, they had hired people with the uh, 7 feet 8 feet tall guys that once the americans come to put boot on the ground will 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 give them a lesson but what actually happened 
I mean, the it was the uh, you know beyond visual range missiles which played the role, and they had decimated entire Iraqi air force, and the, all the you know Iraqi army bases were destroyed. And by the time Americans actually came on the ground, there was no Iraqi army. So this was a lesson. So are we like? So so the point is what? See what has happened in the past. Now, what is happening? 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 Now, what is
of accepting new talent, cross pollination, of conceding that technology is changing in this matter. Today in Ukraine, coders are as important as ammunition. They code, they de- break the code. So it, there is a revolution in military affairs, which is happening, which China seems to have mastered or it is in the lead. And we have to catch up. The sooner we do it, the better. That's all I can say. So, uh, just carrying this forward, you spoke about uh, you know how dangal release in China and uh, so in these influence operations, China has been an expert for a very long period of time. They have used national heroes, national icons, uh, to influence people in America, in Europe, and in India also. We have seen in recent past. I mean, there are Chinese companies who pay you. one and a half times more than any other company for advertising a very similar product like for example if there is a cell phone a chinese cell phone brand it is going to offer you 1 crore rupees if you are a bollywood star on the other hand the korean company is not going to offer you more than 75 uh, 75 lakh rupees so they are so they use all these celebs to uh, these stars to create a kind of leverage that they can use over you and we know that uh, film stars in india are a huge deal they might not be equally huge in other countries but their strategy keep changing just find out which is the sector which is the industry who are the individuals people hold as icons let's compromise them first let's corrupt them first so we also do we need to have a comprehensive dialogue within our country about understanding china how china operates it's not just government or the bureaucratic level but in mainstream we should have movies we should have these dis- debates and discussions on television which are 99% filled up on discussions which are not which do not matter to the people or the national security at all so see what you are saying cannot be discussed publicly the very nature of it is but the point that you make is that soft power by itself has a certain value but that soft power must be linked to a strategic purpose and when you link it to a strategic purpose you perhaps cannot go public about it as long as it is in our consciousness but see the answers will come from these chinese examples so i'll just give you these examples they tell you so there was a person called dr fran chen wing yang name no change actually who's he he's a nobel laureate american citizen Yeah. Nobel laureate in physics. He gets enticed by a woman called Wang Fan. It is romance. There is no harm. He gets enticed and he shifts to Beijing, and he is a Nobel laureate, winner of the Albert Einstein Medal, and he is working on some projects of the CCP, which also means PLA, Nobel laureate. And on one of his birthdays in the recent past, he receives flowers. and who is the flowers are from whom president xi jinping so enticement and state patronage going together are they coincidental no <laughs> the left rest is left unsaid so it has to be subtle another gentleman called dr andrew yao master code breaker chinese have an eye on them they do something but it, the mission goes wrong now that also is happening but see i want to quote to you this their international scientific cooperative collaboration is used to enhance the military space and nuclear weapons program through front companies now this see just listen to this military civil fusion the chinese way and i am quoting in document to you 2018 their national defense university publishes a textbook explaining military civil fusion it is part of a series of pla teachings on xi jinping thought so it is the military ex, you know explanation or elaboration on xi jinping thought of military civil fusion see how explicit explicit it is and i'm quoting directly our military it says should go out into the world and integrate into the global economy systematically you think why should military global economy but so our integrated military civil collective should allow civilian activities abroad to provide a camouflage for military capability 
we will also need through the obor one belt one road to build civil infrastructure for military use now this is being taught to them it is in their doctrine so you see when you have these road rail airport harbor projects they are civil in nature but they are also broadly aligned with military requirements so for example there is talk that rocket force i was talking of they are building containerized missiles which can be put aboard container ships you will not know will the, uh, we do it no will the americans do it possibly not that's not in our values but the chinese are doing it we have seen such initiatives only in video games so far exactly so i am saying that in this ccp pla textbook everything is kosher they are explicitly saying this i'll give you two more examples so they have two companies changai zenhua heavy industries company z uh, zpmc china communications construction group cccc now they are engineering arms of the pla they are building their bases in the south china sea uh, they are and helping the chinese military build up in taiwan curiously two years back it was discovered that you know the there i there was something called gulayat cranes which were operating or used for the british aircraft carriers hms prince of wales and queen elizabeth gulayat cranes were owned by these chinese companies so in this book that ian eastern writes in a crisis these are autonomous they are digital they could just simply stop operating if they stop operating what will happen to those aircraft carriers so this chinese conception of intelligence deception obor it is built in their strategic outlook and it is so deep so nefarious that our responses cannot be ones of innocence yes and so therefore your basic point i agree so we must we need to build this kind of mindset if we have to take care so you see one you have those instruments of hard ball which are visible rocket force strategic support force all that is happening in the pla all that is happening in intelligence coupled with innovation wo jo scientists ko trap kar lete hain acha now do they only copy no now we should be honest their military has been built into their innovation economies so you know they have very strong innovation economies you were talking of mayors before this discussion began so the shanghai mayor versus the beijing mayor they are in competition now they compete in the civil domain so they could be competing in energy they can be competing in green uh, air technologies they are also competing in military technologies and the, that competition in military technology happens because pla teams are embedded into their mayoral economies and whatever good happens say in ai 5g ai enabled 5g is transferred that much faster to their forces so they look at this now whole thing innovation intelligence deception these instruments i began with swami vivekananda's quote this power dynamic that is being created is one of its kind now to confront it we need to do far more and as you said for example let's take precision see what is happening the lesson of ukraine this precisionary you spoke of ordnance factories they are dumb ammunition behemoths yes they have to convert into precision now to do that it's not easy because precision means the 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 fusion of microelectronics and explosives they are separate technologies it will take decades to happen so uh, you know once again from the things that we discussed today the lessons are obvious so but so just yes. one small interruption but the throwing out 100 dumb bombs and one smart bomb I mean, what one smart bomb can achieve, hundred dumb bombs might not achieve. Exactly. So, so you have to get precise. So, I mean, they might be cheaper, as the ordnance factory board members often argue that what we produce is so cheap, and the government can afford, and it's light on the wallets of the Indian taxpayer. but in reality it is not like that is it i don't think so i mean in my view see you need to have you can't have everything precision because it's yes, very expensive yes. but the ratios need to change mm. and the cost effectiveness has to be seen in an integrated manner mm. after all the cost effective cannot be only cost effectiveness cannot only be 
the cost of the round when it leaves the barrel the cost effectiveness has to be seen on the lethality and damage that that round causes at the target end so if it kills 10 or if it kills 20 if it destroys four platforms and but just see the scale of the challenge now just see you heard of the high mars in ukraine yes now this is how the nature of global national security is changing so i'm told the high mars battery it is uh, you know very precise and it is based on mechanized platforms from the time you decide to move a high mars battery say you think see a threat developing a threat you decide to move a high mars battery the high mars battery takes 7 minutes to move out but today these kill chains have become so fast the word is thousands of kill chains in hundred of hours the kill chains have become so fast from sensor to shooter that if you don't move out in 1 minute your 18 guns are gone so this is how warfare is changing those high mars are important but they have to be able to scoot in less than a minute or they will be taken out so it is you know all a complex so the last point i wish to make is that see military capacities today there was a one time when we thought military was very staid it needed to be conventional today you need creativity you need to think ahead creative so this is the whole composite national security challenge so i mean we are i'm sure we are studying the ukraine conflict we are seeing what is happening in the taiwan strait i'm told the indian military is doing a study on what will happen if a taiwan contingency happens the fact is you have to be on the ball and also see you may do everything look at the russian air force i mean it is surprising they had cruise missiles they had ballistic missiles they had long range bombers but they have just proved to be ineffective now people say it is look look what happened their initial targeting was okay so what they called siad suppression of enemy air defense was fine but the diad the follow up echelons which destroyed just didn't happen what the chinese are arguing i'm told they have the df17 missile which is the penetrator missile mm. which creates the initial window and then they plan to follow it up now whether that will happen in combat is a different matter so even when you create the capacities there is a challenge why won't it happen because for what for example why didn't it happen in ukraine a lot of issues the russians lack those precision munitions our own air force says that their cid ad campaigns were not structured imaginatively perhaps their pilots were not good enough so whole lot of things can happen i mean war we know that uh, all plans get scattered and capacities get scattered it points to the great complexity no of course of the russians have now recovered today they are winning the war but one they are back to those why why are they winning the war is again technology persistent surveillance ah, i forgot to say this you see those eight domains what do they give you persistent surveillance now persistent is once you capture a target it remains in your custody you are following it and you hit it at the most opportune moment and not see a target then lose it persistent surveillance and long range precision so now when these counter offenses of the ukrainians are coming they are just being taken out they are losing men they are losing tank platform they are losing artillery guns so it's a seesaw battle between traditional metrics of combat and the emerging domains so actually if you ask me modern war fighting is the ability to skillfully mesh emerging domains with the traditional domains the wisdom creativity and effectiveness with which you do it I mean, it is a comprehensive challenge. So, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And sir, okay. next time, uh, I hope that we can discuss on uh, semiconductors yes. and and a possibility or a scenario where these Chinese um, arms technologies and ammunitions land up on India's western border, because that is going to because we have seen it in the past that what China has done very smartly has uh, empowered. uh the your his enemies enemies like they have empowered north korea for us empowered pakistan for india and uh, they are very good at doing it so and uh, we have we are yet to take uh, start taking name of taiwan from latians so i hope the south delhi soon start at least taking the name of taiwan thank you so much for joining one more thing i must just add you see this latest decision which was taken to ban laptops and all which i think yeah. has been reviewed now yeah. there is a purpose yeah. if we see what is happening with those cranes of the aircraft carriers mm. this all this computer business yeah. and all so this is where you know the world of commerce and national security have to be also converged yes sir because commercial uh, 
while there are commercial possibilities it leads to these national security implications so and sir and for all the great powers in us and china uh, their big businesses are an extension of their foreign policy and national security and strategy and we have seen how uh, america uses google facebook and all these giants and uh, similarly you have so quoted a few names of the chinese so the americans use globalization to make money yeah. the chinese use <laughs> globalization to make money and also strengthen their national security and but sir americans also use their businesses to bring democracies in a lot of countries also <laughs> yes Ajay. so now that is the whole let, let's just end with this the lesson is that democracies have to deliver in a superior manner than before authoritarian uh, regimes that i think is the true challenge from the world of commerce business to national security okay thank you, thank uh, thanks you so a lot thank you so. great pleasure thank you